hope you guys can hear me. Okay, uh, my name is Pavel and uh, I wanted to talk about uh, block cloning for ZFS. Uh, it's been a project I've been working on for, for quite a while. This is not like a huge project, but basically it's I'm working on this whenever I can. So uh, I think uh, Matt knows about that. So he invited me to talk about this. So he knows that this will motivate me to work a bit more and like push it uh, forward. Uh, uh, most of the stuff I will be talking about is actually written in, uh, in, uh, in the PR uh, for, for this feature, but nobody reads text these days. So I will record TikTok video later. Uh, okay, so uh, the talk is mostly about the design, but I will. Uh, I can take this off, right? Okay. So the talk uh, is mostly about the design, but uh, I will say a few words what we are what we are actually uh, doing here. So uh, so block cloning is like on demand the duplication. So uh, the duplication in ZFS is automatic, and, and this is, uh, I have to specifically say that I want to clone, for example, a specific file. So the idea is that we don't want to copy any data. We just want to reference uh, the data blocks uh, from two different uh, files. Okay, so uh, so the idea here is that uh, uh, we want to. Uh, I'm actually connecting this to copy file range uh, system call. Uh, if you are not familiar with the system call, normally if you copy a file, it's uh, the CP will read the data from one file to user land, and then uh, send it to the kernel to the right system call. So copy file range actually tells the kernel, uh, here you have two file descriptors and offset from the source file and uh, offset into the destination file and length and just do the copy in, in the kernel. So don't bother like sending the data to user land and, and back. So it actually has some nice properties other than that. Let's say you have NFS mount and by doing copy file range, you can actually tell NFS server to do server server side copy. So you are not sending any data over the wire. You just tell the NFS server to, to copy the data uh, at the server. So I, I'm, I want to reuse this system call for this purpose. So you will, you will say that uh, cop you want to copy the data, but actually you will be cloning the data uh, between two files. Uh, it's also possible to do this for zvols as well, but this is not, not implemented. Uh, okay, so uh, we cannot modify uh, block pointer. So we cannot keep any reference counter in the block pointer or anything like that. So we need additional table. So uh, you will notice that this is actually pretty similar to the duplication. Uh, but uh, uh, it's different, uh, and there are quite a few differences actually. But uh, we will keep this uh, this additional table with reference counts per top level VDEF. So each top level VDEF will have its own uh, block reference table, and I will I will talk about that a bit more uh, later. So. When we clone, we don't read any data. We just need block pointers. And also when we write, we also don't write any data. So uh, um, because of that, it's way faster than even copying the blocks. So we save space, and we also save, save time. Uh, when you move files between data sets, between, because this is also supported, uh, when you move files between data sets, you don't really uh, grow the, the table. Uh, 
because you, we just need to bump the ref counts uh, for a short while, uh, write those uh, indirect blocks in the destination data set and just free those, uh, the source ones. So you don't really grow the, the table. And the feature is also always on, which have some consequences, but there is no additional cost when it's unused. So if you don't use it, uh, there, is, there is nothing you have to worry about. But if you do use it, we have to consult this table on every free request. So whenever we free a block, we have to go and check if this block is not in this table. Uh, and this is optimized, I will also talk about this a bit more. So uh, the BRT entry is extremely small, so actually we need three, uh, uh, three things uh, in order to be able to, uh, to tell which block is it. We need VDEF ID, we need offset into this VDEF, ID, uh, into this VDEF and we need the uh, reference counter. Uh, if you can, uh, uh, it's easy to imagine that if you have that you have quite um, that you have only few VDEFs and you can have many blocks. So in most of those block um, uh, BRT entries, the VDEF ID will simply repeat. So uh, we decided to uh, to have uh, this table per top level VDEF. That's the reason. So we don't have to store VDEF ID. So actually the BRT entry is extremely small. It's just the offset as a key and a reference counter. And just as dedupe, it uses uh, micro zap. Um, okay, so what's the differences between this and the duplication? So as I mentioned, there is uh, no cost on write. With the duplication, we have to have the data uh, and we're actually writing the data, and ZFS will calculate the checksum, and then it will decide that you actually don't need to write the data to the disk. But you have to have the data so we can calculate the checksum. So with block cloning, you need no data. You just provide the source and destination. <clears throat> and it works with any checksum algorithm. With the duplication, you have to have cryptographically strong uh, checksum. Uh, Block cloning works even with uh, checksumming disabled. Uh, the entries are uh, with the duplication, the key is the uh, hash. So if, especially with cryptographically strong uh, hash, uh, blocks that are resides close to each other on disk can be actually in totally different parts in the duplication table. That's why it's really hard uh, to like cache the duplication table because the blocks are just scattered across the entire table. With, uh, uh, with BRT, the key is the offset. So uh, entries that are close to each other will be close uh, in, the, in the table. Uh, there are no entries with single reference. So if you have data block and you clone the block, only then we will create an entry in BRT because uh, there is additional reference to the block. But once you free one of those copies, uh, the entry will be removed from the, uh, from the table. With the duplication, you have to store all the blocks in the table. So on each write, on each block creation, we have to create an entry uh, in the dedupe table. So uh, that's the huge problem with the duplication as well, that the table grows even if, uh, if you have a lot of blocks that are uh, with just one reference. With BRT, there are no such entries in the table. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, it's uh, on demand. So you actually specifically uh, clone the file or block or given range of bytes, and uh, it's always available. So use cases, there, there are a few. So of course, the big one is, is space savings uh, when cloning files. Uh, it's like the duplication, you can have, I don't know, uh, many thousands of, of reference to, to a single block. And uh, of course, the savings will be huge. Uh, another one is how you recover files from snapshots. So let's say you took a snapshot, you removed, the file by, you, you removed a file by accident, 
and you want to recover the file. So n currently you have to just copy the file from the snapshot into your data set. So you will actually duplicate the, the storage you need for this file. With block cloning, you could easily just clone the file from the snapshot into your data set. So uh, you, don't, uh, you don't pay this, uh, this extra cost of, of additional storage. Also, cloning is extremely fast because we don't read any data, we don't write any data, we just need the, uh, the block pointers, so it's, it's super fast. And, uh, you, and it can also be used to, to moving files between data sets. And uh, when I was uh, listening to the uh, AWS talk, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really uh, interesting to imagine when, the, when you have uh, NFS mount on ZFS, let's say across the ocean, and you need to copy like a huge file. And NFS will use copy file range, so you don't really transfer the data over the wire. And on the server side, it will use block cloning to actually copy the file. So even though the server is extremely, uh, uh, is, is somewhere else, in, uh, and it's, uh, the link is very slow, copying extremely large files will be just super quick. So that would be cool. Uh, okay, so cloning is uh, divided into uh, two uh, parts. So uh, when we uh, do the clone, we will call ZFS clone range. It will read the level uh, zero uh, block pointers from, from the source file, and it will uh, create all the, uh, it will create, uh, mm, it will remember uh, which blocks needs, needs reference bump uh, in, in uh, this pending, pending, on this pending list, let's say. But once we get to the syncing content, uh, context, uh, we will apply all those uh, changes that we made. So we, uh, we increase some of the reference counts for some of the blocks, et cetera. And uh, in syncing context, we'll just sync everything to the disk. So uh, there are like two parts uh, to consider. So when we free a block, if, if the block was cloned, uh, and we are freeing the block, but it was cloned in the same uh, transaction group, we will just remove it from, from the pending list, and, and we are done. If the block was cloned, and it's already uh, on disk, the, um, we have BRT entry, then we have to decree, uh, decrement the, the BRT entry, so there is additional stage in, uh, in Zio pipeline for this, uh, which comes just before uh, ddup free. Um, okay, but uh, we don't want to pay this cost on every free. So we don't want to go to the disk and read the table and, and try to find if we have an entry uh, for this specific block. So, so we had to optimize this, this specific case. So uh, what I do is I divide each VDEF into... Um, a regions, let's say, one gigabyte in size. And, uh, and in this uh, structure, I keep track how many uh, additional references I have in, in the whole region. Uh, and this is extremely small. We can, we can hold this in memory. So let's say for one terabyte of storage with one gigabyte regions, you only need eight kilobytes of memory. So actually, Matt suggested that we could even use much smaller regions, like one megabyte, and, uh, and, have, and require eight megabytes of memory per one terabyte of storage. But this can tell us, uh, when we are doing free, uh, there is a function, BRT maybe exists, that the function will, uh, will tell us that uh, for sure there is no BRT entry for this region at all, so there is not even one block in this region that was cloned, or it will tell us that there might be a block in this region. So only then we'll go to the disk and read, read, try to find the entry corresponding to this block. But if it's uh, fine-grained enough, uh, 
I think that that would be like a huge optimization that we won't be actually going to the disk almost at all to, to find out if the block was cloned or not. We will be able to just free as usual and it will be cheap. So and there will be no additional work to be done uh, in order to, to free a block. Because this, this is what we don't want to, uh, we don't want to definitely slow down freeing the, the blocks if somebody doesn't use or uh, just use BRT, but maybe just for, uh, for very small amount of data. And, and this, this array of uh, reference counters, counters is stored on disk as well, so we'll keep track uh, on this all the time. Uh, there is also additional bitmap uh, because for large regions like one gigabyte, uh, the whole array will take eight kilobytes. So we can just sync the whole array all the time. But let's say we would try, we would want to switch to one megabyte regions. So then we'll have eight megabytes. So we don't want to flash eight megabytes every time somebody clones a block. So I keep additional bitmap which, are, which can tell us which part of this array is actually dirty and should be uh, flashed to, to disk. I even have a picture. Maybe it will be easier to understand. So let's say uh, at the top we have a BRT table. So we have one block at offset one gigabyte. We found uh, five reference uh, with five references, right? Then we have another block with three references, another one with seven references, but this is all within one gigabyte region, right? So in the middle, we have this array of those region ref counts. Uh, I didn't came up with any clever name for that, sorry. So uh, we'll have like a sum of all the ref counts in this region. So as you can see, region zero and two, uh, there are no block clones uh, in those regions. So if we are freeing a block which is within those regions, we immediately can tell uh, there is no need to go to the disk and, and look for entries. But for regions one and three, if we are freeing some block, we have to check if, if the block is uh, in the table or not. And this dirty bit, bitmap is only stored in memory, and it can tell us that uh, some parts of, the, of this uh, array are dirty or not. So we'll be just writing to disk only a small part of the uh, of this uh, region ref count array. Uh, but currently this is not yet implemented. There is some code, but uh, with one gigabyte regions, it's probably not yet required, uh, but it definitely can be done. Uh, so also we have to consider how block cloning interacts with the duplication, because you can easily imagine a block uh, that was uh, in dedup table. It was uh, stored multiple times, so we have few references in the dedup table, and the block was also cloned using copy file range. So uh, the block is in both tables. Uh, so when we free the block, we have to choose one of the tables. Where do we in decrease the ref count? We can do this in dedup table, and we can also do this in, in BRT. So actually, Alan came up with idea that uh, if somebody is already using dedup table, we can just use dedup table and not use BRT in this case. So if somebody is cloning a block, which already has dbit, uh, the dbit uh, uh, or d flag set, we'll just increase the ref count in the dedup table. Uh, and there will be no, no additional entry in, in BRT. So we will have no such problem uh, at all to decide which table we should, uh, in which table we should de decrement the, the counter. Uh, okay, so uh, crossing data set boundary is uh, a bit challenging. It's perfectly doable, like, that's why we have, like, uh, pooled storage. The whole storage is, is shared, so uh, we can definitely do that, but there are some limitations. So. We don't want to be able to clone blocks between data sets with different encryption keys, for example, because then we won't be able to access the data. And the same with, uh, we don't want to clone blocks between data sets where one data set is encrypted and the other is not. Uh, 
there are some problems uh, uh, raised by Alex uh, with Zeal because um, mm, Zeal is attached to uh, to single to to one data set, right? So each data set has separate uh, separate intent lock, and uh, and we have to uh, and we have to address uh, we have to clone blocks that are actually part of a file from different data set. So when we replay the zeal, the blocks may be freed already. So uh, yesterday, actually, uh, Matt mentioned an idea that we could, uh, we could make use of the uh, zeal claim to actually uh, bump the reference for the, for the blocks before we actually replay the zeal. Because the zeal is replay when we mount file system. So we can import the pool without mounting all the file systems, and uh, then mount some of the file systems, remove a file that had blocks we wanted to clone, and then we will mount the, the, the file system that we cloned into. And then those blocks are already freed, so we cannot really reference them anymore. But the claim, zeal claim, is done on, uh, on pool import, so we could uh, try to bump the references then, maybe. But uh, uh, this needs some more experimenting. Uh, OK, uh, so uh, the logging is implemented uh, differently than any other function. Uh, so uh, because for every single operation, we have one function that is actually used during normal operation. And the same function is used when we replay the zeal. Uh, in our case, uh, it wasn't possible because what I do, uh, I don't just want to reference some object from another file system. So what I do, uh, I copy the block pointers into the uh, uh, log record. So we have all the block pointers we need when you replay the zeal. So, uh, and this is why for replay, we need another function to actually implement zeal replay, log replay. So this is uh, uh, maybe not something I'm super happy about, but, uh, uh, but I don't see any other choice for now. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there is a problem when, uh, when block reside, blocks reside on different uh, file systems that the, blo uh, that the uh, blocks may not be uh, valid anymore. Uh, so I mentioned some solutions here. For example, we can not use zeal at all in those cases. But maybe with the zeal claim idea, we could actually have zeal as well uh, supported for this kind of uh, use case. Uh, so there are three new pool properties. So we can uh, like see uh, how BRT uh, is being used. So uh, the first value BRT used is how much uh, data was actually cloned, then how it will uh, BRT logically used, how it will, uh, how much space it will be used without block cloning, and BRT ratio. So basically. You can calculate this BRT ratio by dividing those two values. Uh, there are sp some special cases uh, because uh, initially I thought that this is like very similar to the duplication, but actually it's not. Like not having the data, it changes a lot. So first one is uh, the block we want to clone uh, might have been created in the same transaction group. So somebody writes the data and wants to immediately clone the data. So the block pointer is not yet allocated. So we cannot really clone it yet. So, uh, so I'm sim simply, in this case, I will wait for transaction group to sync. And then we, we will be able to continue and clone the block. Another one, uh, it's pretty similar that uh, the block might have been modified in the same transaction group that we are cloning. So again, we just wait for transaction group to sync. Uh, 
So block could also be cloned multiple times during uh, uh, one transaction group. So uh, the spending list I was talking about uh, is actually a tree. So we can quickly look up uh, the entry and just bump the, uh, the counter. So with, on the spending list, we can, we can tell that, OK, this block was actually cloned five times in this transaction group, not only once. Uh, so also another case we have to consider is that we clone a block and we free a block in the same transaction group. So this has to be handled as well. Mm, another interesting case that we uh, clone a block and then we clone the clone in the same transaction group, which also requires some special code to handle. Uh, uh, and of course, we have to make sure that we will properly handle holes in the file and also BPs with embedded data. And there is uh, another interesting case, uh, which can actually might be even useful for, some, uh, for handling temporary files. That I create a file, I delete the file, but I keep the uh, fi file descriptor open. And I can just use it as a temporary file and of course, if I crash, the, the data will be freed. But uh, so there is no file on the disk. I just keep the, the file descriptor open. So once I'm done with whatever I had to do, I can quickly recover the data from the already deleted file using block cloning. So uh, I'm not sure if this will be useful, but uh, it's also needed some special handling. Uh, and some random notes. Uh, VDEV growing is supported, shrinking is not. So uh, if the VDEV grows, we automatically will extend the table, extend those, uh, um, actually not the table, that will extend the, uh, this region ref counts array. Uh, but we cannot shrink. The shrinking is, is not supported. Uh, So if, it, if BRT is not used or no longer used, we will, for example, we'll free the last reference in the BRT, all the structures and all the objects in MOS will be freed. So uh, the, property, the, the feature will change from active to enabled in, in Zipl properties. Uh, offsets and length in copy file range have to be uh, record site aligned. Uh, so for now, I'm just returning an error if there is no alignment. So uh, the operating system can still use the regular copy. But this, this can be fixed by just copying the data which, is, which are misaligned and using cloning for everything which is uh, record size, size aligned. But for now, I'm just returning an error, and, uh, and there will be regular copy in this case. But most of the time, uh, you want to just clone the entire file, so that's not a huge deal, I guess. Uh, you cannot also you cannot clone into a file with different record size because this is uh, th this 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 cannot work. You, you can only clone when the record size are the same or the file, the destination file is uh, empty. Uh, copy file range on FreeBSD operates only within single mount point. There is a check in VFS for that, but this can be easily fixed. I actually have a patch for that. On uh, Linux, uh, there was a recent change that allows copy file range to work uh, even for different mount points, but for the same file system type. So if it, if, it is, if it is the same file system type, let's say we are copying between ZFS and ZFS, then ZFS method will be called and we will try to clone it. Of course, it might be still different pools, but uh, if it's the same pool and all the conditions are met, uh, it's not, data sets are not encrypted, etc. we can do the cloning. Uh, and a big one, people cannot actually uh, 
give up on this one. When we send a snapshot or when we send the data using ZFS send, we lose all the savings. On the receiving end, we are not able to rebuild the BRT. Uh, we just send the data and I have no solution to that. The only one that came to my mind is just turn this into a dedupe that tell that, okay, those blocks were cloned on the source. So maybe add those, ent those, those, those blocks into dedupe table. And uh, because they seem to be, um, this data seems to be uh, maybe the duplicatable. So, uh, but that's the only idea I have. It's, uh, so that's unfortunate, but this is how it works. Uh, so uh, as for the status, uh, the implementation is pretty much ready. Of course, there is always something to work on. Uh, but uh, mm, some plumbing is required, but actually uh, different record sizes. This, this, this was easy, actually did that yesterday, I can just return an error if record size, sizes don't match. Uh, handling unaligned requests, again, I, I'm, for now I'm just returning an error, but we could partially do the copy and uh, do the cloning for the majority of the, of the request. And uh, zeal between, uh, when we are cloning between data set, uh, that's still uh, unresolved, so. That's it. Thank you. Are there some questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, not sure if I will be able to repeat all that, but uh, but the idea is uh, so. Your idea is to 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 try to transfer this information that. Uh, uh, that the block, uh, that there are multiple copies of the, or multiple reference to the block within one sense, uh, ZFS send stream, correct? Yes, but this will work only within a single ZFS send stream, yeah. right? If we have, if we have the dupli uh, duplicated data in one stream, then we could deduplicate using BRT. Yes, we will have to bring back the duplication option for ZFS send for that. That would be possible. But again, this is just um, not full solution, right? It will only work within a single stream. Uh, if you do another ZFS send, then you won't be able to figure out that you already have those blocks, actually the same data, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, Matt. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, but this is, again, it's, uh, it's only partial solution to the problem, right? We, we could only uh, use BRT within a single ZFS send stream. Uh, but, uh, of course, it would be great if we could figure out how to like be able to rebuild the BRT uh, somehow on the server side, but uh, I don't know. So uh, you know that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is why, why the record size have too much? Because, well, when the ZFS is, is building a, a file, it basically the, re the block size will grow until it will reach record size, and that will just add another record size, and only the last block can be smaller, right? So, uh, so we cannot just, uh, so, uh, so a block in the middle, it cannot have smaller size. So all the blocks up to the very last block have to have the maximum size or the record size of the data set, or, uh, or at least the same block size. So we cannot just punch, punch a block in the middle of a file with different block size. It wouldn't work, simply. Uh, so how does block cloning uh, works with uh, device removal? I think there is, uh, there is actually no special handling needed because all the block pointers will simply work, right? So uh, if, if, let's say, I free a block, I just use the old block pointer, 
if I clone a block, I, I can still use the old block pointer. So there is no interaction be between blo block cloning and VDEF removal. So actually, I think I tested that at some point. And there is nothing special we, we need to do there. Yeah. OK, so the question is uh, how we determine if, if we, uh, uh, that if I consider different data structure for determining if uh, if I need to free, uh, if I need to cons consult BRT when I free a block, uh, like Bloom, uh, uh, Bloom filters, yes. So this is actually uh, Bloom filters are better for like deduplication, I guess. But for this, we uh, we don't really need anything fancy because the the structure is extremely small, uh, and uh, and it can tell us already with like uh, can give us pretty much very precise answer if if we need to go and look up the entry on disk so i didn't look for anything else because i think this is just works very well so no need so this cannot be used for ddupe because it will uh, with why, why this cannot be used for dedupe? So uh, for dedupe, because you have all those like random keys, you will quickly fill the entire table, right? So every region will have some reference count, right? Because it's just uh, so random. So it won't be possible to, to make it work efficiently uh, for dedupe. Uh, so for dedupe, you would need something like Bloom filters. But for this, it's, it's much simpler. Any other questions? Ah, OK, so uh, how does it work that we only need offset and ref count in BRT entry and we don't need uh, length? Because uh, the only thing we need is during the clone to make sure that uh, 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 block pointer already has length, or you can determine the length, right? The, the size of the, of the block. So, we don't really need to store that in, into, in the entry. That's why also we have just one offset. We don't really need entire block pointer as in the duplication case, because just a single offset and VDEF ID uniquely, uh, uh, it's unique for, for each block pointer. There, is, there cannot be any like overlap or anything like that. So. Exactly. Yes, if the record size changes, then, then BP, the new BPs will have different sizes, and, and that's it, right? So we don't need, need anything special. So uh, Matt actually suggested that we could even go, uh, even make the, the BRT entry even smaller to just try to fit, because now there are two 64-bit uh, values, offset and ref count, and maybe we could just uh, squeeze all of them into 64 bits, which would uh, be possible, especially for like, let's say you have uh, uh, like 4K uh, A shift or 4K uh, sector size, uh, then of course offset cannot occupy those first bits and you could use those for ref count. But of course there will be a limit of how many references you can do. And I think we are, it's small enough for now, so I don't know. Any other questions? Yes, Josh. Yeah, so, uh, so the question is, uh, what happens when we, uh, let's say, clone uh, blocks which are not stored on the disk yet? So we have to wait for the transaction to sync. And what, what if there is a problem during the sync and we cannot really clone the en entire thing, right? So uh, it will just work as a partial write. So if you do the clone, and the cloning will fail at some point, we'll just do partial success. We'll just return partial success. So that's it. And uh, I decided to wait for the transaction to sync because the only other solution would be to just return an error. But this would uh, tell the upper layers to just copy the data, let's say. And I think it's better to just wait for the transaction to sync than to do copy because uh, somebody just wanted to clone uh, within the same transaction group. So, so the question is, uh, if we 
can we do uh, DMU sync or just force uh, transaction group sync if, if the block is not on the disk yet? Probably we can. For now, just to stay safe, I just wait for the transaction to sync. But definitely, we, we had this discussion like uh, about privileges when somebody does zpool sync. If unprivileged users should be able to do that or not. So, uh, uh, so maybe uh, that's not a problem, even if we force. And, and there will be a way for the user to just force transactions to sync by just doing this, creating a block and cloning. And this will force the transaction to sync every time. So I'm not sure, uh, uh, I'm not maybe convinced yet if this is like safe, if we want to do that or not, but maybe. Okay, so the question is uh, that we only uh, that we only read uh, level zero uh, block pointers, and if it would be possible to clone also like uh, higher level block pointers, so uh, maybe it would be possible. But for now, you have to recreate the entire tree of indirect blocks. Uh, it's still, I think it's, I think it's. Uh, I'm not sure if the if the savings you will get from not doing this, if, if that's possible, would be uh, reward the complication that, that it brings. I didn't really try to do that. I just followed the, uh, uh, my idea was to uh, like follow the experience on the duplication. So with the duplication, you also only the duplicate data blocks. And uh, so I wanted to like copy some of the experience we had with the duplication that are good and not to copy some of that that are bad. So uh, so I just focused on the data blocks. So quota, quota accounting works uh, uh, exactly the same way as with the duplication. So each data set will be uh, accounted for those data. So uh, it will be accounted twice if you if you clone into different data set because we cannot really determine who's the owner of the data, right? So we have to just do that. I'm not sure. How would the duplication accounts in within the single data set? Sorry? Yeah, you get charged twice. So it, it will work exactly the same. So does that support FI clone and FI clone range IOCTOs from Linux? Uh, I implemented no interface for Linux to use that, uh, but it's definitely, it definitely should be supported if you just create this, uh, just teach uh, SPL layer for Linux how to use uh, ZFS clone range, because there is ZFS clone range function in uh, operating system independent code which does the, the whole work. And there is some uh, interfaces like in FreeBSD uh, specific method to just call this one. Uh, so it has to be implemented for Linux as well, but I'm pretty sure it should be straightforward. So uh, the question is if I did any testing to see uh, how, how, practical, uh, how practical savings look like for, for this. So, uh, uh, I don't really see how you can like determine that because, like for uh, dedupe, you could uh, use ZDB to determine like for your live data how much is the duplicable, uh, how much you could uh, save by the duplication. But for this one, it's on demand. So whenever you need to like. Of course, some tools, like for example, on FreeBSD, CP already supports copy file range. So CP will automatically be able to use that, right? Uh, but, uh, but you still have to like, uh, you have to use the system call to, in order to, to do the clone. So uh, the only thing you could test is to like, how much, the duplicate, uh, how much data, how much duplicates I have in my pool. So maybe if I start to use that, I will be able to eliminate those duplicates, but probably not all, uh, but some, I guess. So the question is, in CPU utility, is uh, dash dash redirect or reflink? 
referring yes option. Yeah, yeah. So on Linux there is option like that. So yes, it means to use this kind of feature. Uh, I'm not sure the details. There were some like uh, uh, problems uh, with this how it works uh, because there is also like dash dash always uh, which won't work. Uh, interestingly, but. Uh, but on FreeBSD, you don't need any options. It will just use all. It will always use copy file range, so it will always try to. Once this is done, uh, it will always clone, basically. Yeah, George. Okay. So the question is, if I did anything special for Scrub? Uh, no. Uh, in, in dedupe, uh, there, is, there is code which basically allows not to scrub the same blocks multiple times. Uh, unfortunately, with this, it, it's, it's not possible to the extent it's possible for, uh, uh, with dedupe. So unfortunately, you will, be, you will need to scrub the same data multiple times. Uh, probably some work can be done to like remember what we scrubbed. Uh, I don't know. We would need to maintain another table in memory during the scrub. So, um, any other questions? Yeah. Ah, sorry. Thirty seconds. Go. <laughs> So the question is uh, to, to try to once, once again explain why uh, cloning between uh, different record size doesn't work. Because once you have a file in ZFS, right, it could only use one block size within the entire file, right? So the only block that can be smaller is the last one, right? So we cannot really, uh, so, uh, we can't really punch a block that is bigger or smaller because the ZFS will expect that it, it actually has the same size for the entire file because this is just a single property per, per file, right? Per Z node, the block size. So you won't be able to cope that, for example, you have 4K, 4K, and uh, 64K. It won't be able to do that because the block size is property of the Z node, of the uh, or D node. It's just one for the entire file. So we cannot really use different ones for different regions within the file. So we just have to fall back to, to, to full copy in this case. OK, thank you very much.